Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here. In this video, we discuss GPU accelerated scikit-learn, which is the most popular library for machine learning and data science. And in particular, we're going to discuss CUML, which is an open source GPU accelerated machine learning library, which is developed by NVIDIA as part of the Rapids AI suite. And therefore, the key feature is that we can use NVIDIA GPUs for significant speed ups, 10 times, 20, even up to 50 times faster performance compared to CPU based implementations. And this is great. And if you want to learn more about accelerating machine learning methods, please comment down below and I will uh, respond and I will create new videos. And one advantage of CUML is that it has compatibility with scikit-learn and provides an API, which is very similar to scikit-learn. So this means that we do not need to learn new code or libraries. So everything is very much compatible with scikit-learn. And if you want to talk about the main types of machine learning algorithms, this means that we can use CUML for accelerating clustering methods, such as DBS scan or k-means clustering, dimensionality reduction techniques, such as principal component analysis or PCA, single value decomposition, TISNI, which is a very popular visualization technique, and also regression and classification algorithms, such as linear regression, logistic regression, random forest, uh, rich regression, and so on, and also some other optimization techniques. And as we said, the main advantage of using CUML is that uh, it, it is very much compatible with existing scikit-learn code bases, and therefore there is uh, no uh, need to change code or anything else to accelerate things. And in order to use CUML, in particular, we use this Excel module, so cuml.excel. To show you how this works in a real world problem, let's look at a relatively large data set. We're going to use this data set, which is called coverage type data set, uh, which in this case, we have a classification problem. We have a number of features or predictors, and our goal is to predict the forest cover type um, that we have. So let's uh, import necessary libraries such as NumPy, Pandas, also from scikit-learns and ensemble module, we're going to import random forest classifier. That's our base uh, machine learning algorithm or classifier here. Also, we're going to use train test split uh, to be able to um, divide the data into training and testing sets because we wanna make sure that we get the same accuracy if we accelerate our model. And also we're going to look at accuracy score mainly here. And one thing I want to do here is also make sure that we change the runtime to be able to use T4 GPU. So we're going to use this uh, T4 GPU and now it's connecting. So that's something to keep in mind. If you wanna make sure that if you wanna use GPUs, we need to be connected to one of the GPUs available uh, through Google Cloud. So now I can run this cell. And as you can see, we are going through these um, libraries and importing them. So this first cell is now completed. And this is the URL for this data set, this, cover, this, uh, this uh, coverage type data set, which is part of the UCI machine learning repository. And these are the names of these uh, features or predictors we have, such as elevation, um, different soil types. And once we read this um, URL, um, you can see that we're going to look at this um, data frame. So in this case, you can see that we have, uh, because we're using data.head, we are looking at the first five rows of this data frame. These are the features that we have. And at the end, we have this um, coverage type. So this is the, 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 these are the labels that we want to predict. 
And if you want to know exactly how many features we have here, um, so one way is to look at what we have here, but also here I'm using data.shape. So this tells me that I have 581,000 uh, samples. So that's what we're saying here, but we have about half a million samples. This is a very large scale data set and we have 55 columns. And out of these 55 columns, remember that one column is the target variable that we are trying to predict. And in this case, we have to form the feature matrix and the label or target vector. So X in this case is the entire data frame where we drop that column, which is uh, cover type or coverage type. And the Y here is, is actually that column coverage type. So we do form our feature matrix and target vector. And now we're going to use this train test split to use 20% of our data uh, for testing purposes and the remainder for training. Since the main goal here is to show how we can accelerate uh, machine learning algorithms used in scikit-learn, we're going to use this percentage percentage time at the beginning of our cell where we run this random forest classifier. And this is a magic command that measures and displays the execution time. So I'm going to do this. Uh, and one thing that we have done here is when we use this random forest classifier, so we have like number of estimators because this is an ensemble classifier, set the max depth, the max features. Also, I'm going to use n underscore jobs to be negative one. So this tells random forest classifier and scikit-learn to use all available CPUs for faster and parallel processing. And then we use clf.fit. So the interesting thing is that since in this case, we had originally about uh, 581,000 data points, and then we use 80% of these for, uh, for um, training. So if you do the math, this would be about like 400,000 or so. And therefore you can see that this cell is still is running. So this should take roughly about two minutes. We'll see what number we get here. But in this case, this is going to take a very long time. And after we do this fit, which is done in this cell, you're going to use dot predict to find the labels for the test data and compare the ground truth labels with the predicted labels. And then just to save time while this is running, because this is going to take some time, I'm going to explain how you can use that module cuml.xl. So the easiest thing you can do is to use this percentage load underscore ext, which again, this is a magic command. Why? Because of this percentage that you see here. That what it does, it loads an extension which adds new functionality and modifies existing behavior within this uh, notebook environment. So this means that once I run this cell and access to the functionality of this CUML, I have to again import random forest classifier. But this time when I import this, because I've already uh, used this cell here, this means that I'm going to use this GPU acceleration. So this second time I'm running this random forest classifier, I will be using this acceleration through CUML. And hopefully here we get a noticeable speed up. So let's go back to that cell that we um, ran earlier. You can see that it's still this is running. So this is exactly why it is very important when you're working on larger scale problems to accelerate your machine learning algorithms. Okay, great. So we finally got our results. And one thing that is very important in terms of what these numbers mean, so this is the total CPU times, uh, system times to in terms of like reading data. But the main thing we, we care about is this wall time. So this means that we waited about um, two minutes and 17 seconds uh, to, to fit this model or train this model. And obviously you can go here uh, through this blue box to see the parameters and things like that, but we don't want to necessarily look inside this random forest classifier. One thing, although we want to look at here is the accuracy that we get. So it's about 70%, right? Or 70 point 
64% accurate, this model that we have trained. So now here is the most important part of this video. We use this load EXD, CUML.XL to use GPU acceleration provided by NVIDIA CUML. This may take a, a, a few seconds because we are uh, installing this accelerator for scikit-learn, which is also called sklearn. And once we are done with this, we're going to be able to uh, import random forest classifier again and run this uh, training or feeding um, uh, cell again. And the nice thing is that you should do this only once. So that's something to always keep in mind that you don't need to run this multiple times. Once we you know, run this and as long as we don't get disconnected, that's only one time we have to spend uh, time to um, to load this cuml.xl. Okay, great. So now again, this is a really important step. You have to import random forest classifier again. So we have done this. So here is when the magic happened. Let's run this cell again and see how long it takes this time. And this is great. So you can see that now we only had to wait 7.59 seconds. So you can see this huge difference that before we had to wait about two minutes and 17 seconds. Now this is down to 7.59 five, nine seconds. And if you really want to make sure that your model is still it has the same accuracy, so I'm gonna copy that code, put it here. Remember this CLF again is trained here using this faster approach. And hopefully we should get the same exact accuracy result. And that's exactly that 70% that we discussed before. So you can see that just using this load EXD CUML.axel, save us a lot of time, especially if you want to do things such as hyperparameter tuning, you have to run this random forest classifier uh, with different values of n estimators, max step, etc. You see that we save a lot of time. I hope you found this video helpful.